Welcome to this tall guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, first of all, I'd like to say that we lied to you. We uh, said we were not doing a Bald show. Bald face lie. A show. To, we were said yesterday on Facebook that we were not doing a show, um, and we are actually doing a show. And um, see. Yeah, that's, that's just what happens sometimes. Sometimes we have to change our plans. Yeah, so, I mean, what, we have an awesome video coming up. Um, we didn't get uh, all of the... There's a lot of cool supplies and stuff that we need. Yeah, yeah. That's coming. A lot of preparation coming up. But uh, to start this uh, show off, we actually uh, saw a Bud Light commercial that we thought was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a look at that to uh, start off the show here. Mm. Bud Light. Bud Light Party here to discuss equal pay. Women don't get paid as much as men, and that is wrong. And we have to pay more for the same stuff. What? Yeah, cars. What? Dry cleaning. What? Shampoo. What? You pay more but get paid less? That is double wrong. I'm calling everyone I know, and I'm telling them about this. This has got to stop. Bud Light proudly supports equal pay. That's why Bud Light costs the same no matter if you're a dude or a lady. Yeah, Mom, you have to pay more for a car than Dad. No one treats my mom like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh no really so um that's not my actual response <laughs> <laughs> i wish it would be <laughs> that, that was easy. my emotional response <laughs> there's so much bad in there um good job bud light <laughs> yeah. bad job uh, let's can we start that over and we'll actually go through it for real this time bud light party <clears throat> here to discuss equal pay women don't get paid as much as men and that is wrong mm. i'm going to leave the response to this <laughs> to uh shoe on head take it away the wage gap is simply the average earnings of men and women working full time. It does not count for different job positions, hours worked, or different jobs. It has nothing to do with the same job. It has nothing to do with discrimination. Thank you. And that is wrong. And we have to pay more for the same stuff. What? Yeah, cars. What? Dry cleaning. What? Shampoo. What? Okay. <clears throat> so you pay more for cars because. Uh, women tend to not want to be in as much conflict as men a lot of times, so they don't negotiate. That's the difference. They don't negotiate the prices of their cars. They also don't negotiate as much for their wages, and they, uh, for some reason, tend to buy into the belief that products made for women with all the fancy flowery you know, uh, marketing strategies directed at them are somehow worth more or better for their hair or whatever than the stuff that's, you know, made for dumb men that, you know, basically scrub our faces with rocks because that's all we need, right? So when they succumb to marketing or refuse or shy away from uh, negotiating more than men, they're going to end up getting the, the raw end of the stick in a lot of ways. They're going to get worse uh, deals on their cars. Uh, they might get paid less if they don't negotiate as hard. You know what I mean? Like that, Plus, that's what's happening. They here. have more hair, so they need more shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know why I didn't think of that. <laughs> Le leave it to, is that why you thought of that? Is that... <laughs> I, I, I just want to let you know, I, I paid zero dollars for shampoo. <laughs> got it. Got it. All right. Yeah. You pay more but get paid less that is double wrong i'm calling everyone i know and i'm telling them about this this has got to stop bud light proudly supports equal pay that's why bud light costs the same no matter if you're a dude or a lady well we already covered the gender pay yeah yeah i mean that's really all that's said in here yeah. is that women just you know get it get it worse pay more get paid less pay more for products yeah i mean they're like she's like acting super surprised that Bud Light costs the same for women and men. It's like, go to fucking Walmart and you'll see everything costs the same for uh, you no matter what gender you are. Oh, really? I would like, I'd, I'd check that. You At know, Walmart? Because, yeah, because like, you know, you have, um, I mean, e even guys can fall, can succumb to this, right? If, if there's a generic product, and I, I remember reading about this, if there's like a generic product that's, that's, um, that'll work for both sexes, let's call it deodorant. And then there's a man deodorant with a guy on a mountain you know, like a hardcore marketing strategy, edgy, like uh, Axe, right? And then you have, you could take the exact same product and, and put it in a, in a pink bottle and market it to women as, you know, strong for what a woman needs, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. These products will get, will, will, people will pay more for them. Guys will pay more for the guy marketing and women will pay more for the, the female market, marketed products. But that's a decision that they, that they make. I think that, like, if you just take this in a literal uh, at a literal stance, and it's just like if you grab the exact same thing at Walmart, it's going to cost oh. the same, no matter <laughs> yeah. if you're a male or a female. Sure. Yeah. Like, 
Okay, sorry. Yeah, I, so, I mean, they're claiming sexism in the fact that stuff costs more, but it doesn't. There are generic items that cost the same. It's just you're falling yeah, for marketing you strategies. Yeah, but had the example of a car, it's the exact same car. You're just not negotiating very well for it. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Basically, what I'm trying to say is their point fucking sucks. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Check this out, man. It's your boy, Easy Money Man. I just wanted to bring y'all a little public service announcement, man. Listen, do not be impressed with this shit, man, right here. This paper right here. That's what this is. This is paper. It spins, man. This shit right here is you got it one second and it's gone the next. The little stacks that y'all have. Th th let me, you want me to tell you what this is right here? This is my fucking mortgage. I'm about to go pay my mortgage, okay? And I wanted y'all to know... Don't be impressed by some of the bullshit y'all see on IG, man. People posting pints of lean and, and stacks of cash. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, you might be getting money, but that money got to be paid out somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Where do they live at? Do they live with their mama in their mama basement or what? See this right here? This this house right there? I own that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what is they driving? Personally, man, you see the Cadillac. You see the minivan? It might not be the newest 2016 Porsche or no shit like that, but guess what? I got the pink slips on both of them motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? So my thing, my point is this. Watch your goals, man. Yeah, it's cool to have money. Yeah, it's cool to get money, but sometimes the people flossing, man, that little paper that they got, man, is gone the next day. You know what I'm saying? I could go and post a stat. You know, I could go and post a picture of this right here. All these hundreds and twenties in my hand right now and act like I'm balling. But I'm about to go pay my fucking mortgage because my kids need a place to live. You know what I'm saying? Last year or about a year and a half ago, I was in the slums of fucking South Central L.A. And before that, I was in southeast side of Grand Rapids, Michigan. You know what I'm saying? So me... My goals are to steadily progress, and y'all should be the yeah. same. So watch who you following, man. Make sure that they motivating you the right way, because if this is all they motivating you to do, this little bullshit right here, get you some real shit. Get you some assets. Learn what an asset is, man. Some shit that can liquidate into a cash value. Houses, man. They don't make no more real estate. They don't make no more land. Land is, is that's it. it. The land that we have here available now, that's all that there'll ever be. You know what I'm saying? Get you a piece of property, man. Get you some cars. Get you some things worth some money. I keep the gold on my neck, because at any time, I could cash this shit in. You know what I'm saying? If I if me and my family are suffering and I got an issue, I'll go sell this shit because it's an asset. It's worth money. But that's what it is, man. Get motivated and do something, man. It's your boy Easy Money, Easy with a Z. Y'all know what Easy the business is, man. Much love, much prosperity, much blessings to everybody out there, man. You know what it is. Phoenix, Arizona, to the rest of the world, man. Salute. Peace. Dude, he gets it. <laughs> Straight out of, like, I guess what he used to, he grew up in the ghetto but he still understands that basically what he's trying basically what easy with the z money is trying to say mm -hmm. is that buy bitcoin uh, <laughs> no <obviously not>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> no he's trying to say that he's making the point about assets versus uh, fiat currency fiat currency being something that devalues over time very quickly uh, being that you know if you have a and he's also making a point to like fathers um, that they need to you know why are you looking at me like that? Uh, this, it gets funny because it's like buy a car, but cars depreciate. <laughs> yeah, but at least it's an asset that you could turn around and sell. Yeah, a de depreciable asset. Yeah, a de very depreciable asset. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, same with like the gold on his neck. But right? the gold can go up in value. The gold can go up in value. Yeah. Cars don't really so go up in yeah, value. Yeah, that's different. So yeah. the gold was a good choice. Cars, house, house is an excellent choice. Well, of course, because as long as you land, you own the land, then house is just like part of the land right? yeah so yeah it's just like cherry on top anyway it's just, it was a cool video because you don't usually see people with gold teeth um suggesting yeah. that you buy hard assets I, I didn't know what he was saying you did i didn't know what he was saying oh, okay yeah easy with the z easy, easy with the z money with, with the z money yep. yeah we should get him like a guest spot on the show i think it'd be really <laughs> freaking awesome all yeah. right cool <clears throat> next <laughs> up <laughs> we're rocking it today yeah. Um, here we go. Okay, so <clears throat> I always say I'm bringing it down. Bringing yeah, it down. yeah. Here we go again. Um, so real quick, and I'm not going to dive super deep into this, but I want to make a couple points uh, that I don't hear a lot of people making um, about the Nice attack in France, the terrorist attack. Um, basically, 84 people were killed by uh, a coward who drove a truck through a crowd 
um, rather than than doing what we would do, and if we, we would take our ideas and we would try and convince people like we're doing now, we would we would take ourselves and we would compete in the market of ideas to try and show others why our truth is the best truth or the most appropriate truth or the you know the the way to go the way to live your life we compete by getting the message out there by creating youtube channels and by you know going to these events and talking to people this asshole competes by driving trucks through crowds of innocent people mm -hmm. yep. anyway the point i wanted to make was to the anti-gun crowd um there are there's, there was, yeah, I think we have them up now. There's photos of a little girl's body next to her doll. And I think this is the most, one of the most powerful photos I've ever seen. I want to point out that there are no bullet holes in that little girl's body. Mm -hmm. The problem was not how fast the truck could go, how big its wheels were, or how difficult it was or wasn't for this man to acquire that truck. The problem was the man. The problem was the ideals, the ideology inside the man's head. The problem was holding an ethical framework that somehow told him it was not only acceptable, but preferable to do this sort of evil thing. We can't fight evil until we can name it, until we can identify it. And so... My point on the gun debate is that no one in this situation is pointing at the truck as the problem. And in the other shootings that we've had, the other shootings that we've had, people are pointing at the gun. And this shows the, the dichotomy. This shows the, the break in logic. People understand, for some reason, more instinctually that the truck is not the problem and truck ownership is not the problem and truck regulation is not the problem. Yeah. But for some reason, they ascribe all of those to the gun and the gun regulations and the gun control as what we need. We don't need to control trucks to prevent this stuff, but we need to control guns to prevent this stuff. We're not identifying the correct enemy. The correct enemy is the ideology that produces psychos that think it's okay to do this. That's the enemy. In both situations. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to target and call out and attack and shine the, the light of day on. Yeah, because then they get to pass. What? If you, it, that, the, that ideology gets passed because yeah. it's not shown that that's the real problem. Yeah, the evil is not in the truck, uh, the trucks, the bombs, the rockets, the drones, or the guns. It's in the people that hold these terrible ideas that somehow allow them to carry out, to carry out these like acts of, of evil on people. Yeah. Uh, to further your point, um, the truck was finally stopped by the the police and the, the driver. They used bows and arrows to no, stop, right? No, to stop the they truck? used guns. Oh. And it was a special circumstance because of all the terrorist activity that has been happening in France. The French police were finally able to carry a gun. They don't usually carry guns. Oh, really? They usually carry whistles, flashlights, and batons and bullshit like None that. None of which would have stopped that truck? No. Interesting. Yeah, you can't hit a truck with a baton and expect to get a good uh, outcome from that. See, the problem is I don't feel like the people that need to hear this type of message actually ever get this message because the sources that they listen to never give them this message. Like, they never, they're never affronted with the argument that, you know. I was, I was hearing that a lot of um, media outlets were saying, like, this was a truck attack. You know, <laughs> like, really? like, yeah, like, like this was like a, a, a massacre by a truck. mass trucking. Yeah. Yeah. A massacre by truck, you know, wow. stuff like that. They weren't saying like that this group murdered these people, you know, it, I mean, it, it's just, it's just, it's a great example to point out kind of the absurdity of the gun debate. It's like, we aren't now having discussions on, you know, what kind of wheels, what's the fast, what's the top speed of these trucks? We need to lower the top speed because they, they roll too fast. It's only going about 35 miles per hour. I, I'm, I know. I'm just saying. I know. Like, I'm just saying. And, so. and people in these mass shootings are not shooting 37 magazine clips a second either. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> uh all right, so that's the point I wanted to make. I didn't want to kind of dive into the whole story today because I'm really trying to keep the, the show happy today, and I think we're going to succeed. But cool. there is a conflict. There's a break in the logic. 
mm-hmm. for the anti-gun people, and um, I wanted to point that out. The next story we have uh, is a positive, uplifting story of anarchy in India, which is really awesome. So let's let's roll this, and uh, we can that talk about it. That guy is urinating on the wall. Are you an ugly Indian? All of us here are the ugly Indians. This place smells like urine. A lot of urine. This is our problem. The Ugly Indian is a Facebook group uh, that focuses on spot fixing, spotting an ugly part of their towns or their cities and fixing it. It's meditation. It's about the broken window theory that if an area is ugly, ugliness attracts ugliness. But if you can make it beautiful, people will look after it. Make the space look like somebody's taking care of it. The tragedy of the commons. We protect our private spaces, but we neglect public areas. Erase the signs of neglect, which is the posters on the wall and installing symbols of respect. The picket fence kind of a design, sharp edges, triangles, actually works on the psychology of the onlooker that we should not mess up with this space. In India, there's a real problem of people spitting tobacco to paint the bottom of the street red. So if they are going to spit into that corner, it'll be less visible. But of course, you can't really fix a problem just by painting over it. This is positive, disruptive anarchy. How to influence people's psychology. And it's largely based around Facebook. You take a picture before and you take a picture afterwards. The before and after makes larger impact than that of words. Nobody's being paid to do this. This is not even an NGO. It's just an idea, the ugly Indian, to make India more beautiful. That we are all the ugly Indians because unless and until we accept the fact You're and assume the responsibility of the dirt and filth, we won't be able to solve it. Have you had an impact on your street? Let us know and share this video. So what I find awesome about that is that they didn't even try and form a nonprofit. They didn't, they just went out and did it. They went out and made positive changes, not by talking, but by doing. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people that we've been surrounding ourselves with lately are people that do instead of, you know, just bloviate. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I'm really inspired by that. Not only that, but I, I was just thinking about like, if, if we had, a, if we got a group of people together here to go into public spaces and paint, to try, even if it was to try and clean up and improve the area, can you imagine the regulatory? Dude, uh, yeah, like we would probably get fined and um, shot. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> shot, but I mean, yeah, potentially. So uh, the, the the cool thing is that these people got together and they improved their space. Yeah. Um, without asking permission and and uh, you know without the need of government and without the need of you know forcing people around them to pay for the improvements, they just did it. Yeah. Well, look what happens when you're trying to feed the homeless. Yeah, so. good point. We yeah. need to we need to bring them on for an interview about that again. Yeah. Yep. All right. Cool. Cool. So now I have a story. Uh oh. A story about a man who has to do a little something something before he does the hanky panky. All right. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So this uh, UK man, so he's British, um, was acquitted of rape after a retrial. So he was charged with rape had a retrial, which means that there was something wrong with the first trial. And then after the second trial, or the retrial, he was acquitted. Um, he was acquitted the first time, or it was a mistrial? Where was this, first of all? UK. Okay, UK. Yeah. So I have no idea how their legal system is. No, I don't mean, either, but uh, he was acquitted of rape after a retrial. Okay. Okay. Um, and so, cleared of all charges. Right. Good to go. Didn't, right. Like, under the law, he did not commit that rape. So... Um, but somehow the cops have have swung it so that he they're, they're requiring him to let the cops know when, where, and with whom he is going to engage in intimate relations with 24 hours before he does it. Yes. <laughs> what? Totally innocent. <laughs> he has to do this. I don't even care if you're guilty. What, what was he accused of? Right. Okay. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's, So he's innocent of rape. Yes. But he has to do this. So he has to plan sex in advance. Yes. And let the government know. Right. Yes. I'm going to it's going to take me a minute to process this. Hold so on. so under the order, uh, the man must disclose the details of any female including her name, address, and date of birth at least 24 hours prior to any sexual activity taking place. Um, First of all, he's never getting laid. Exactly. 
which which is a major yeah, that's the first problem the yeah. first problem is that he has to go through jumps through so many ho- hoops just to have sex and the privacy of his home that that's never happening can you imagine like oh what the, what what's your name what yeah what, what? Uh, no you have to be like 24 hours just, beforehand you'd be like <laughs> just i'm just te- you, i'm just texting the police right now Hold yeah on. I can just i pencil you in for 8 p.m tomorrow I, because I, my time is running up i just need to make sure it's on the police's calendar that we're you know maybe gonna have sex you know yeah exactly so this full sexual risk order is what it's called it's called a sexual risk order um, lasts for a minimum of ten of two years, and breaching an order can lead to a prison sentence of up to five years. Um, they are used when someone has not been convicted of a sexual offense, but the police convince a court it is necessary for one to be made against that person to protect the public from him or her. I'm not sure anybody in that country has any concept of liberty because they, I mean, well, I can't, I can't even say that because we're look at where we're going, but yeah. That's crazy. So you're innocent and you're guilty. Yes. So that's the first problem. And there's no way out of it. If the cops want it, it happens, I guess, right? That's right. crazy. So that's, the problem is that they have like complete uh, control of his sexual life now. Because, I mean, he has to get like information that, you know, you don't usually know whenever you're going like a first date with a girl. You don't know her name, address, date of birth, fucking, you know, you don't know that shit. Not only that, but you're innocent. Yes. So it's not like you should have to go around for two years telling anyone that you're trying to date. Oh, yeah. hey, and they're by trying the way, to they're trying to get it to where it's permanent. It'll he'll have to do it for the rest of his life. They're trying to date just it. because he was accused. Yes. And wow. Yeah. Uh, the ter- leave that country. I would leave. Yeah, definitely. Do that. Wow. So the the, the terms of of his order mean he cannot use any internet enabled device that cannot be be later checked by the police. Um. And he said that uh, this banned him from using certain fridges and lifts or elevators or whatever that are connected to um, the internet. Uh, the man has been charged with breaching the terms of the order by refusing to give police the pin to his phone. Um, he decided to have he's, he decided having taken legal advice not to give them the code as a point of principle because he said the terms of the uh, don't have to explain. The, the order I understand the principle. Were supposed were supposed to be prohibitive, not obligatory. Um, wow. He was arrested and held in police custody overnight, and he's threatening to go on a hunger on a hunger strike because oh. he said that this is completely unlivable. Yeah, the state really cares if you starve yourself to death. Exactly. Oh, that's gonna work. So, so if th- at first they, <laughs> they 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 fuck him with it with just what the order says he has to do. He has to call. He has to call the police, tell them that he's having sex twenty four hours beforehand. Now. They have such restrictions on what devices he can use that he's not able to use like common things that we take uh, we take for granted every day. Like if if he uses an internet connected device, they have to, he has to have that device um, accessible to the police. That's the same thing as punishment with no trial. Yeah, like they're punishing him, and there was no trial that resulted in in that punishment. Right. Yeah, it's, inc- it's it's crazy because this is like, <laughs> what do you even say? There's no other there's no other crimes that you can point to that where they they go to this extent. And what con- what country was it? UK. UK. Yeah, it's off the rails, guys. Yeah, your country is going off the rails. It's nuts. Around these parts, I would uh, like obviously I don't know anything about the UK, but uh, I think there's something called a writ of habeas corpus, which is Latin for "Where is the body?" And he'd be like, "Well, if I didn't do the crime, I don't do the time." But yeah. that is so like he he was tried and found not guilty, or or they threw out the trial altogether because like ah, eh, not enough for the case. And they're like, "Oh, by the way, we're gonna shrek your life." That's crazy. I, I, what can you say? Like. Yeah. Your, your your shit's off the rails, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's nuts, man. Uh, next, we have... Um, uh, yesterday, we actually released a video. I just wanted to pl- do a quick plug here. Um, we had an awesome hour and a half long interview with uh, some guys on jury nullification. Uh, hit that. This is one of the best, most effective ways to literally change the world and change people's lives and set people free and put criminals that deserve to be behind bars behind bars. This is not something that you run from. This is an activism. This is a form of activism where you get to change the world, not something to be, I mean, yes, it's an inconvenience, but it's a, you can be a hero to people with this. That's what I wanted to say. Like, this is one of the most inspiring things I've heard of in years. And don't 
run away from a jury summons, it's an opportunity to, you know, to make an impact in someone's life. Probably the only opportunity you'll get to actually use the judicial system to set people free. So if you're like me, you've always been worried and, uh, and just kind of, oh, I got a jury summons or, oh, it's, you know, I haven't had one in a while. I'm probably going to get summoned soon. Mm -hmm. And then you have to slog your ass down to the court and you have to put up with the insane retarded process that is the jury summons and selection process. And you do everything you can to get out of it because it's interfering with your job and interfering with your life and interfering with your paycheck. Um, I really, if it, but it's but it's one of the th what I found out from these guys is that it's like I said in that video it's it's one of the most powerful ways that you can make a positive difference in people's lives especially when it comes to victimless crimes. Um, so I if you're interested in finding out more about that and why you should not run from your jury summons, check out the video. We'll put a link in the description. Next up, we have oh uh, this is interesting. So I was criticizing Black Lives Matter <clears throat> movement recently for not having a direction other than to obstruct, not having a direction other than to complain and tear down and exacerbate animosity. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I was surprised to see that at least one Black Lives Matter group has come out with a plan for change, a plan on how to fix the problem that they're having with police. So at least that's something. And I just wanted to go over it. Um, so, yeah, anyway, we're going to go over it. All right. <laughs> All right. So these are the planks, the 10 planks of the Black Lives Matter group's plan. Number one, end broken windows policing, which aggressively uh, polices minor crimes in an attempt to stop the larger ones. Uh, so this is something like, um, you know, if, the, if, if you catch somebody, you know, vandalizing property, you need to make sure that you're policing the crap out of those because if you don't go after the small crimes, then people will kind of feel more free to get involved in the bigger crimes as well as commit more of the smaller crimes. Mm. Um, the problem I have with this is that, I mean, I, I think the concept is pretty sound, except we have a crap load of victimless crimes that are the small crimes. Right. And so what ends up happening when you follow this kind of procedure is you end up aggressively uh, pursuing a crap load of minor victimless crimes like broken taillights and saggy pants, which create all the problems that we've been experiencing and talking about lately. Right. Um, so that's, I mean, it's, like, it's a good thing, but it's not because of the policies we have in that area. Number two, do you have anything on that? No. Number two, using community oversight for misconduct rather than having police decide what consequences officers face. So, it, I mean, police investigating themselves is absurd. Mm -hmm. Police deciding what their punishments are when they, when they do find themselves guilty is absurd. Uh, so, at least to a certain extent, the community, meaning the people that hire them, should be the ones that investigate crime and decide the punishments. Right. I'm just a little bit dubious about what they mean <laughs> by community oversight for misconduct. But, um, yeah. So I guess that would need to be better defined. Mm -hmm. Number three, making standards for reporting police use of deadly force. This is interesting because about a year ago, I was trying to put together a piece on police murder. And so I went and tried to find statistics on, uh, you know, exactly how many how many times police have killed someone, murder or otherwise, uh, in the country and in the state and in the city. And those numbers did not really exist, uh, except there's a couple groups. Um, one's nonprofit, maybe I think it's run by Cato, something like that. And then there's another another group that runs a website that just tries to simply keep track of the numbers of people that die from police bullets. Uh, good or bad, murder or otherwise, just keep track of the numbers. The FBI doesn't really. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I think this is a good one. I, I'm on board with them on this one. I think we absolutely need... Uh, I remember um, uh, someone in the Army saying that, you know, any time they pulled the trigger on their gun, every, any time that they, you know, shot a round, that they had to basically claim it and report it and talk about, you know, why they shot that bullet, you know, they had to account for every single one of their bullets. Hmm. And um, 
I thought I used to assume that all police departments had this requirement because it seems you know, pretty, pretty no no shit Sherlock kind of policy. Like yeah, but um, I I found out that not all police departments have that kind of um, ammo accountability. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah, I, I could see it being difficult in the military. I don't know if that's military absolutely does it. But what if you're, I mean they're shooting automatic weapons, right? So like, what if you just fire off fifty rounds? You got to account for all fifty of those. I'm pretty sure. I mean, people can correct us if we're wrong in, yeah. in chat for sure, but yeah, that, I'm, I'm pretty sure what, what I remember being told. Yeah, it seems difficult, but... Yeah. Cool. It just seems like basic accountability. If if you're somehow magically infused with the ability to initiate deadly force against people, you should be accountable. Mm. And I don't know. Yeah? Yeah, so I'm kind of on board with that. Oh, that's totally, yeah. Um, independently investigating and prosecuting police misconduct. This kind of goes to what we already talked about. It's kind of a duplicate of uh, the earlier one. But yeah, uh, the, the, the investigations of police misconduct should absolutely not be done by police, should absolutely not be done, probably not even be done by ex-police because they'll be sympathetic to a lot of the situations that they'll be too sympathetic or biased is probably a better word. They'll be biased towards that rather than the people that the police work for. And, and they're also too connected to the justice system. True. Yeah, so like the courts can't do it either. Now, here's, but the second part of this, independent prosecution of police misconduct, I think is the biggest, like, secret, awesome nugget of, of, inform, of, um, of good idea in here. Mm -hmm. Right now, we only have one justice system. And, it's, and if, uh, if citizens does, does something bad, we go through that justice system. And if, a, and if a cop does something bad, they end up going through that same justice system. The conflict of interest is that that same justice system is the one that they're, they've been partnered with for however many years they've been on the police force. They're friends with, they want to defend their own. So it's not, it can't really be a fair trial. Right. Because these people are going to be biased. So there sort of needs to somehow be an independent justice path for police and I, I again i agree with that i think that's an interesting idea i would love to hear comments if anyone disagrees or has other thoughts uh the let's see number five having the racial makeup of police departments reflect the communities they serve R racial quotas yeah also known as racism <laughs> <laughs> uh or reverse racism. I don't. I don't, I don't like the term reverse racism. I reverse think it's, I think discrimination. It's just, I think yeah. it's just racism. Yeah. Um. I, I don't even have anything else to say on that. Like, you it, it, you can't deny a person a job based on the color of their skin, and it not be racist. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So having the racial makeup of police departments, we already talked about. Require or did I? Did we? Yeah, okay. Requiring officers to wear body cameras. Yeah, sure. Check. A, a lot of departments are already doing this. I can't believe any departments don't. I think it should be, you know, something we expect, and they should leave them on. It should make it to where if you <laughs> if you forcibly remove it, it sticks a spike into your body. <laughs> <laughs> or if if you turn it off, it just sets off an alarm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like oh, that. oh, that's a lot less and violent. The <laughs> and the backup camera turns on. You know, <laughs> the like, backup yeah, camera just, like comes up over the shoulder, like what the hell is that? <laughs> I didn't know that was there. Awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> providing more training for police officers. This is, I mean, this feels like just like, oh, yeah, we're going to provide more training for police officers. I'm pretty yeah. sure they're they're trained like. They're definitely not going to do it, but um, I, uh, I, I practice jujitsu, and I know one of the Gracies, I've seen a video of his where he talks about the lack of training that police officers have. He actually does breakdown videos of police trying to subdue people and points out all the problems they have in trying to control a person because that's all that jujitsu is. It's groundwork. It's like trying to keep someone mm. where you want them to be on the ground. Oh, really? And so he does like this like kind of like a commentary style like of police takedown videos. And he was just like, these guys obviously have no idea what the fuck they're doing and haven't received the training necessary to properly subdue someone. They don't know how to anchor themselves correctly. They don't know how to throw someone down to the ground correctly. They don't know how to bring, bring someone's hands behind their back. They always have a problem with that. That's not really that hard if you know exactly what you're doing. They lack training significantly. So all cops need to learn jujitsu. <laughs> and if you ever want to get away from a cop, learn jujitsu. <laughs> well, definitely judo. Judo is... <laughs> judo? The, is What's the, the difference? Uh, judo is all about takedowns. Oh, okay. So you can use their momentum to help take them down to the ground that's that's that would be very important interesting yeah i think what they meant 
is uh, telling cops, hey, guys, don't be racist today. Oh. Yeah, I misread that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, ending prof- uh, ending for-profit policing practices. I think everyone I know would be on board for this one. So, like... Uh, Asset forfeiture, which is just a pretty name for theft. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, some some police municipalities obviously benefit directly from the money that they get from speeding tickets. Drugs is a big one. Which is another name for theft. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ending the use of military equipment. Huh. <laughs> of course. That's awesome. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm glad somebody thought of that. Now... So then we, but then we have to talk about like, what is military equipment? If we're going to deny them equipment, they're going to say, then are you going to claim responsibility when an officer gets killed because he couldn't use the equipment he needed? Hmm. I mean, uh, there's definitely um, a certain point that you reach whenever you get to the armored vehicles rolling down the streets and stuff like that. It, I think it comes to what is the role police, what role do we want police to play? Do we want them to be the, uh, oh, what do you call those, the old black and white show? Barney was the cop, right? What was his name? I don't know. Barney Fife. Barney Fife, yeah. Do we want our police officers to be just like happy, go lucky, helpful members and servants of the community who everybody likes and enjoys and, you know, offers a drink when they see them coming down the street? Or do we want them rolling down the... I wish we had thought ahead to pre-roll this or to have this clip ready to roll of this freaking tank rolling down the streets of Louisiana. Right. Blasting this uh, audio aerial denial device at, mm-hmm. at people. Right. I mean, look... And, and and then there we also saw a video, which I thought... I wish we had gotten where... These police officers were lined up like a platoon in an army. Oh my god! Taking orders, you know, visor down, yeah. and like you know, gun up, and you know, or nightstick up, or whatever. They were trying really hard, but they still looked ridiculous. They looked ridiculous. Oh my god! But but the point is that I I never want to see that in my neighborhood. Damn right. Sorry. Yeah. So if I if I could, you know, my two cents would be I I want Barney Fife. Yeah, you know what I mean. I want a guy that I can I can be happy and friends with, because he's you know doing nothing but helping the community, right? Mm-hmm. Not an army. Yeah. So I'm kind of on board with this. Last one: implementing police union contracts that hold officers accountable for misconduct. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> that's not going to happen. Right. That's that's like asking the police to investigate themselves. Asking yeah. the union to. I, I don't know. I don't know how you could craft a contract that would. Yeah, I don't. That's that's wishful that's, thinking. That's I think. cute. I think that's, yeah, that's, that's a little bit. Yeah, anyway, so there was some good stuff in there. Like I gotta give them credit. There yeah. was some good stuff in there. Yeah, and there was some stupid stuff in there. Yeah, but at least at least they're they have a plan, which is more than they have had so far. Yeah, usually their plan is like we need to go here and and tear up some shit, and then we go here and sing some songs and do a drum circle and chant the same thing over and over and then we need to go to another place and stay this on the is highway what democracy looks like this is what <laughs> democracy looks like and then we need to go over here and stand in the middle of the highway yeah exactly all right the last thing we have for you today wait wait, wait i have an idea do i it. i while you were talking about that i was like what would i do if i could wave a magic wand and what solve would, these problems what would Kason do yeah so i have an idea and i want to run it by you guys what if people pay for the services that they want to consume? Uh, so if you're down with the police as is, you can continue to pay them as is. However, if you'd like uh, a different form of service, why not pay for that? And then if you are paying for it, then they can protect you and serve you. And if you are not, then they don't have to, right? Uh, what do you guys think about some something like that, kind of like uh, every other uh, you know, kind of business on the planet out there? Sounds like you hate America and freedom. <laughs> and you hate the do you, police. Do you have stuffed bald eagles in your room? I think you kill bald eagles. I think you kill some bald eagles. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you bald eagle murderer, bro? <laughs> no, of course. You're bringing the free market to security. 
to police, which is exactly what stops tyrants. I mean, yeah. like if if there's another police union or police, I almost said police union. <laughs> Take it over. I'm done. <laughs> no. <laughs> if this is now the Ryan show. It's all Ryan. <laughs> yep. Do it. Go. Oh, what was I going to say, Ryan? I have no idea. If there's another police union, <laughs> <laughs> if, if there's a competing police force out there competing for you know your neighborhood's business. And one of them has killed no people recently, but has also maintained peace. And the other one is the statist victimless crime enforcing monstrosity that rolls tanks down the street. Which one are your, is your community probably going to give most of their money to? I mean, that's, that's, that's the competition that the government lacks. The antithesis of government is competition. Yeah, uh, we have a person uh, chatting with us, Jameson Weatherford. He's saying that there are, circum- there are places where they have private like security services in cities i read about that yeah well he said there's one in detroit called viper security services i've oh. never heard about that one in particular i've but. heard an interview by that guy i think he was on anarchist the uh the the guy that runs that that um security service yeah and he was saying about the military he was saying that it's prime uh, like the accounting for your ammo it's, he said it was a primary uh for ammo turn-in if you draw 100 rounds and turn in 50 you have to fill out a form but you can uh, just bullshit the form, is what he says. Oh. Yeah. So you got to account for the oh, 50. You mean it's rounds. easy to bullshit government forms? Yeah, because they're so complicated. It's like <laughs> trying to solve a very complicated maze. Oh, okay. where am I going okay. next? Well, I mean, that's a valid point. So even if cops had to fill out forms, yeah. they, they could just, they, they, yeah, that wouldn't be an impediment. So that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. And just as a, pi- a final note on that, um, just something that I find very interesting is just th- a lot of people get up in arms about different services that are currently being provided by the government. Um, and I wonder how many of those complaints could be uh, solved peaceably rather than standing in front of highways and, and shooting people and, and all this nonsense that we've seen going on. How much of that can be solved just by making it a transaction that you may or may not participate in, you know? I can't talk to you. You you have all these dead eagles. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I, you the reason why you feel like you have to go into the street like an idiot and stand in front of a building is because that building is where the power to control your life is. The the reason why you go march in the street you would never march in the street in a free society. Why what who would you march against? Like why would you march? It's because when you're marching, you're effectively begging your masters to change things. You, you can't get hurt, and, and your masters don't listen. They don't, so how do you make people listen? You go like a dumbass that can't think clearly and stand in the middle of a fucking highway pissing off regular people that are trying to get to work. Yeah. So you can't, your masters don't listen when you march in on their building, so you march in the road where all you do is piss people off to get media attention. Because there's this like, there's this like, slutty relationship <laughs> in between this is like media and protesters. <laughs> right? Yes, yes. There's sex happening oh. between the media, who's feeding off the the shit that these protesters are doing, yeah. and the protesters are feeding off the attention they're getting from the media. And so, I mean, the government isn't listening. So we're going to go piss people off in the street and get some media attention. And the media gets some eyeballs because they're covering the shit that's pissing people off. Right. And nothing changes. But let's be honest. Every time I have a negative experience at a Tex-Mex joint involving number of transactions that can occur at a drive through window, I riot in the streets. That's actually, this is sarcasm. I do that. <laughs> <laughs> I love your sarcasm. It's, it's the best. No, yeah, absolutely. Like, when uh, when Taco Bell or Taco, I shouldn't mention corporate names. Should I? It was not. It was not, <laughs> not the Bell. aforementioned <clears throat> what establishment. It was not the establishment. It was, it was not Taco that Bell. It was, it was a different one. Yeah, it was a different Taco it establishment. Was taco, Taco, Taco. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no. Yeah. When when they treat us like crap, we don't go march and protest around their building. We just stop giving them our money, and that is way more uh, effective. Feels so good. Yeah. Yeah. It's like. Dollar bill? No. Okay, I'm gonna tell the story because it's it, it, it's, bills, it, it's like right exactly what we're talking him to about. Tell the story. Yeah. We had three people in the car, and we all wanted something, and there was no one else in the line behind us, so we're not like being dicks. By no, no, saying, no. There's hey, no one else in the parking lot. Yeah, there's it's not just people. No one else in the, dr- in the there's store. No one. <laughs> and so I said, "Hey guys, we we're gonna have three. We're gonna have three different orders. 
And uh, I actually, I gave them my first order, and I said, okay, I think we're going to have a couple more orders, uh, a couple separate orders. And they're like, sir, 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 our policy is that we have a maximum of two orders per car. And I said, hey, I, I, it, if it's your policy, that, that is your policy, and I will not argue with your policy. But I have this money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want that money, maybe you'll take our orders. If you don't want to take our orders, that's fine. We'll take our money somewhere else. Yeah. That, that's totally fine. Yeah. And, you know, this little manager girl has just got pissed. Mm. Just got pissy. But, no, that's the point. If, uh, if, I, if I don't like something that's going on, I just don't give them my money. Yeah. And that's my voice, right? And on the, uh, that same note, we had another interaction about open carry. And then there was another uh, thing I just wanted to bring up, kind of a plug uh, for the Disenthrall channel. We just published a video, watch this before you vote, uh, basically doing ex showing the insanity of whenever you go in to make a vote, you're forcing everybody around you. That was just published last week. Um, great monologue, Patrick, by the way, and kudos to you. Dude, thank you very much. I, I worked really hard on that. <laughs> yeah, uh, so that was a great way of talking. The, the taco, taco, taco story <laughs> yeah. was, was the perfect example there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mar marching in the street is something that you do because you're not getting heard, because you have no voice. Right. That's the story. That's the lesson. You have no voice, so that's why you have to march, mm -hmm. because you're trying to get attention. <sighs> All right, well... Oh, we have another one. Good. Yes. Oh, God. I thought we, we can't end on that. <clears throat> Terrible note. Something to make you laugh. Okay. So, this is serious news reporting. Fox News. Fox News. <laughs> really appreciate it. We appreciate the prayers of the nation. Thank you. Thank you. So, what kind of weapons were used to gun down these police officers, and where could someone get them? Joining us now is forensic expert Jennifer Berenger, and she has some more insight on that. Jennifer, you've been here listening to all of this as it has unfolded. What are your thoughts about the, the weapons that were possibly used in this <laughs> attack? Well, certainly we'll know more coming up. But for now, um, unfortunately, just with laws as they are, and especially being in Texas, um, there's a lot of hunting. Just, just look at the look on her face. She knows that she has no idea what she's talking about. And she's just been told to probably read a teleprompter. She's a forensic. She, okay, she has expert in her title. She knows what she's talking about. <laughs> Let's continue right, this right. expertness. Yep. That goes on there. Uh, these guys could have used hunting rifles, in fact. The big difference between an assault rifle and a hunting rifle is... Here it comes. <laughs> frankly, the scope that one puts on. <laughs> scopes can be Ow, sorry. You always do that. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> All right. No, let, let's continue. Let's continue. <clears throat> let's go. So, um, I know that a lot of your guests have been saying that perhaps this was a very planned attack, but in theory, this could have been done on spur of the moment with a hunting rifle um, very easily, as long as it was a double shot weapon. <laughs> they could. <laughs> as long as it was a double shot weapon. Oh, I got a couple of double shot weapons. They're they're pretty special. Oh, I don't want to talk about what's in your pants. Play, play. No. You easily do it with something that you could purchase at a grocery store. And, and what's also interesting, and I grocery store. Research, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> what she said? Can you, can, can you give that again? She said probably something you purchase in the grocery store. Yeah, I just rewound it. Here you go. Here you go. Can you Here you go. As long as it was a double shot weapon, <laughs> they could they could easily do it with something that you could purchase at a grocery store. <laughs> what? <laughs> I did not hear that the first time. I know. Did she say that you could you could purchase a weapon at a grocery store? A double shot weapon. You can purchase a double shot weapon in the grocery store. We tested <clears> this. <throat> we went to a grocery store. Nothing last, like scientific evidence. Last week. We did a we did a, a little experiment. We yep. went to a grocery store, a local grocery store in Texas, which is, you know, we like it to firearms. And um, <laughs> there was an AR-15 oh. magazine. Oh. Magazine. Not, not like that you put in the AR-15, but like one that you open and you read. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why I'm <laughs> reading Braille, but like that you oogle and read. And that was the yeah. most uh, violent thing in the store, was a magazine. Well, other than some of the marketing displays, but we won't talk about those. Yes. Yeah. Wow. 
And what's also interesting, and I did a little bit of research into this and was not aware of it, perhaps I'm sure other people are, you are. Here comes the uh, research. That you can go into these gun shops and you can buy adapters, right, <laughs> which can adapt a gun and make it a, an assault or a semi-assault, or can make it an assault rifle. That's right. It will certainly allow the rifle to shoot faster, which may have been what they were hearing. Well, for now, oh my God. there may have even been more than one person involved, more than one shooter, but even if it were just the one, uh, it could have been a hunting rifle that um, had a good scope on it that had been modified, as you say, or maybe With an adapter. not modified. Yeah. A lot of times you can hear a lot of echoes, things like that, but he could certainly shoot quickly enough, and from the vantage point that he had above, that could have been done with something that you could purchase almost anywhere at this point. They were looking at the video there as you're speaking, and you actually see some of the flashes uh, from the gun as he fired. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer, one of the Twitter videos that uh, someone had posted where they basically became a citizen journalist, where we heard the pop, 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 it was about the 50 or 60 shots that had been being described. You're saying that that doesn't necessarily mean that that was an automatic weapon, or those were automatic weapons. That's correct. It doesn't necessarily mean that um, Tell us a lot something. of times it can seem faster than it actually is but as long as you have a rifle that has a clip and it's not a situation where your uh, where your bullet actually has to be ejected in between like oh a no rifle, um, you can shoot rather quickly oh no if the bullet doesn't get ejected it you're just... not shooting <laughs> no I, yeah she's it, talking about the shell the yeah the casing like and I, the I, I magazine imagine, like the casing like they just like stack up back there like, it's just like, uh, <laughs> and, and we can buy these oh, practically anywhere. So, you know, I found them in Ikea. Yeah, I was thinking we could go to the convenience store and, and get a plug-and-play adapter for my being AR. Sarcastic. He's being sarcastic. <laughs> That's what he's doing. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, is there anything else or is that it? I, I think there might be a little bit more, but <clears throat> okay, so I'm not a gun aficionado. I, I don't. You know, no whole your, lot. How's your PTSD treatment going, but, by the way? Oh, it's going great. Sarcasm. Um, but <laughs> at the same time, like whenever I heard her talk, I was like, <gasps> like it yeah. just drove me crazy. <laughs> um, like I recoiled in horror. And here's the thing: this is not just a local news. From my understanding, and I'm, I think this is right before Fox and Friends. That would be a nationally syndicated show, people. That's going across the airwaves across America. Yeah. As, this is an expert telling you about stuff that I know just from, like, my very brief introduction to firearms. She has no idea what she's talking about. Yeah, no, no, no. no and uh, the important thing to point out is that these people rarely know what they're talking about about anything they talk yeah. about. They're just heads just on chairs reading teleprompters. Here's the perfect point. Wait, isn't that like us, though? Aren't we just the heads on chairs just talking about stuff? I've got no teleprompter right now. Yeah, I don't <clears throat> Oh, I do. Oh, you do? Oh. Yeah, I write this whole thing out. No, oh, well, no, yeah. one, no one should listen to Kason. Okay. But we try and not talk about things that we don't know about. Right. Or if we do research, it's not um, non-research. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, I think there might be one more point. We can, we can go. And in terms of the crime scene itself and what investigators would be looking for at this point, uh, clearly um, they would be looking for gun casings, bullets, all of that type of thing. Gun Absolutely. casings? Absolutely. And um, they gun could easily pull DNA off that in case <laughs> ah, pull the DNA off they wanted it. to find out who else was involved. It obviously isn't just the one shooter. Look so, at her. She's um, just got yeah, this there blank look. One shooter, but certainly there were others involved. <laughs> so... Gun Can cases. So when you when you go shooting, gun cases just <laughs> fly <everywhere>. all over <laughs> the ground <laughs> with your DNA on them. <laughs> he was giving away free gun cases. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> oh man, what were you gonna say? Can you pull DNA off of a of a like the round? Can you do that? Like a know. fingerprint, maybe if you push it with your thumb. Well, I guess I could just wear gloves. The but. lady's a forensic expert, man. I don't know. Uh. I, I don't want to contra. I don't want to. This is not where I'm educated. I'm just wondering if you guys knew about that because I know a lot less. Maybe, like maybe you can, but I know that just even pulling a fingerprint off of something normal, like a table or something, takes a lot longer than what you see in like the shows and movies and stuff like that. I mean, so. maybe it's possible, but I would doubt you'd get enough material off a bullet, a spent bullet. I just got to think DNA. that that thing is getting super hot, that it, it's going to destroy any evidence that's on the casing. Maybe if you, like, bleed all over the round. Ah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> what it is. I, guess, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's call our forensic expert. Expert, yeah. We have one? Bailey, could you? <laughs> Bailey. <laughs> 
Bailey the dog. The Bailey's dog. the dog, yep. We need Just to have him right here. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us. Well, right. little Can little you get DNA off a bullet? Yeah. Forensics expert. All right. I don't know. <laughs> That's incredible. Very good. That is our show for today. Thank you so much for sticking with us. And and uh, let's see. what We got some... Oh, that's important to talk about. Uh, this is our last time in this studio. We are moving. Um, we're going to move into a new studio. We're actually going to try combining, I think, this channel, possibly with some content that we were trying to do for another channel, make it a little bit more fun and exciting in a new and improved studio. Um, so it Wait, might hold the phone. New and improved. Is it new or is it a second version of something that has been created? That is a marketing thing that I just, I got to jump on that like a spider monkey, man. All right. All right. It is both new and improved. So, <laughs> so, so we're going to take all the equipment we have here and we're going to configure it better. And we're going to put it in a new place. Mm. Your logic is impeccable. Ding. It's new and improved. Yeah. So uh, it might be uh, a week or two before you see us again. Um, check our Facebook for more info. Um, well, we'll at least do something. Unless we lie again. Yeah, right? Unless we lie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, guys.